I want to dive in, if I can, let's see if this works, <clears throat> a little bit of background on the Georgia Climate Project as a way to segue into today's conversation. The two guiding questions of the Georgia Climate Project are the two framing questions that our speakers are going to talk about today. Number one, what does a changing climate mean for us as a state? And number two, what can we do about it? For all the challenging conversations around climate change and the sensitivities and there's politics, everything, right? If we can, the more we can focus on these two questions and answer them in a clear-eyed way, in a robust way, the more we're going to be able to move forward in the state. What does it mean for us? And then what do we do about it? Very briefly, uh, this came up yesterday, but we, the Georgia Climate Project is a consortium that is founded by a series of academic partners. We're delighted now, again, as of yesterday, to be up to nine academic partners, and we're grateful you'll hear from more of those partners this morning. And we basically are trying to do four things to do our part, to work with a lot of other stakeholders who've been here for years, are gonna be here for years, outside of academia, to, to do our part to move the state forward. And it's basically four priorities. The first one is to advance the science. What do we know? And let's communicate that. What don't we know? And let's study that. The second is to, again, do our part to foster a stronger conversation, as I mentioned yesterday, one that can cut across traditional dividing lines of politics, of race, of geography, and really have a conversation in the state about what we need to do going forward. The third is to do our part to support conversations around solutions. And the idea is if we do A, B, and C, those first three things, all the while, we're also helping to work with all of you and the existing teams that are out there to build a stronger network in the state. If we do all those things, right, the theory is that is what allows Georgia to emerge as a real leader on climate change, one that other states look up to as well as really having their act together and, and moving forward on this issue. Substantively, just a few examples of what that actually means. Uh, a bunch of folks in this room took part a couple years ago in something called a climate research roadmap which was basically a summary of 40 questions that if we can answer those questions, that's gonna help decision makers, policy makers, practitioners. It's online, you can see it. The idea is you go online, and you pick any one of these themes and you see questions related to those themes. We'll talk about this a bit more later, but everyone here whose day job is to do research on climate change, please go back to this roadmap and start tackling these questions. We've had some great examples already. The Atlanta Regional Commission is studying the impacts of climate change on transportation, which is one of the questions in this roadmap. We have a whole team thinking about how do we reduce emissions in the state, which is one of the questions in this roadmap. We're making progress, but there's a lot more to do here. On Stronger Conversations, uh, we heard some really amazing storytellers and stories yesterday. And as I mentioned very briefly, those are now curated, and many, many others on a website that's available. You can see it out in the hall, and I'm actually gonna see if I can get, with the team back there, can we roll that uh, little zooming video? So this is, um, Rachel's screencast of if you were, how it would actually work in action, right? So you go on the Georgia Climate Project website, you pull up climate stories, you get all these options on the left. If you click on any one of them, you're gonna be taken on a virtual tour of the state to learn about that story in context. If you click on it, you can pull up the story. This is Mr. Bine in the blueberry video that we showed yesterday. What makes me really excited though is that when you then go down to the arrows, or you can use the arrow keys on your keyboard, you have a playlist that says one out of 18. It's just like YouTube, right? But this is a playlist about stuff that really matters in Georgia. <laughs> uh, and you see other stories around the state. Um, so I really encourage you to take a look at this. And then these tags are now interactive. So she just clicked on Coastal Georgia and up popped the subset of stories that are dealing with Coastal Georgia. You can do the same thing with climate impacts or climate solutions, and you'll get a custom playlist for that. So it's basically a kind of visualization engine for thinking about what climate change looks like in Georgia and what we're doing about it. Um, we hope this is just the beginning and we're gonna look to all of you for your advice on what we do with this now that we have it, right? It's one thing to build a mouse trap, and another thing to use it. So really your advice welcome about how we use this. I would hope that for K-12 educators, for all of us who are speaking publicly on this issue, for policymakers who wanna talk about it with their constituents, that this can be a tool. And also we wanna to add to this, it's something that Mark Johnson alluded to yesterday from UGA. We've been working with students across the state to build more climate stories and we wanna keep doing that. Solutions, um, we'll talk about this a little bit more at the end, but many of you went to, a lot of you went to the Georgia Drawdown 101 session yesterday. That's a great example of the kind of work that all of us can be doing together to really think through and roll up our sleeves and get out our pencils to think through how do we move forward on climate change. In this case, Georgia Drawdown, for those who don't know, 
is an effort to take the great work of Project Drawdown globally, which had 100 solutions for reducing emissions, and as great as that is, none of those answers say, here's what you can do in Georgia necessarily. And so what Marilyn Brown and a great team from UGA and Tech and Emory and Georgia State and others have been doing is taking those 100 solutions and looking at them in a Georgia context to figure out, okay, which of those solutions actually makes sense in Georgia? And they made tremendous progress. We'll talk about it at the closing plenary because we want to get your spot. If we get the technology to work, we want you to pick your favorites of those solutions. And then finally, as I mentioned, the stronger network is very much embodied here. It's embodied by those who are on the webcast, those who unfortunately didn't, weren't able to come due to the wait list, uh, and many, many beyond that. Um, our sense is that well before the Georgia Climate Project started, there were already incredible nodes and networks all over the state who care about water and transportation and communities and all these topics that we've been covering. And the hope is that all of us, and we want to brainstorm about this in the closing plenary, can find a way to better lift up and weave together that network and that fabric, again, so that we can be a state that moves forward on these issues. All right, so you can learn more there. We're, gonna, we're about to turn it over to our first speaker. Um, before we do that, we want to roll one video that's going to set the stage of, again, sort of how the Georgia Climate Project has been thinking about these two questions. What does a changing climate mean for Georgia, and what do we do about it? So I'm going to, we're going to roll that, and then we'll move on to our next speaker. Thank you. <laughs> 